After months of turmoil over its safety, Boeing's astronaut capsule Starline has landed on Earth. It had departed from the International Space Station without its crew and has now landed in New Mexico desert. Although two of the NASA's test pilots have stayed behind at the space station as the Starliner undocked away from the orbiting laboratory, NASA had said that the thrusters of Starliners have been too risky for the crew, which then prompted the decision to keep Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore on the space station. Starliner's journey to the ISS, ISS was marked by the technical failures with five of the Starliner's 28 maneuvering thrusters being more functioned. Further, the propulsion system has also encountered helium leaks during the mission. This return trip was the test to, was to test the maneuvering capability of the Starliner's astronauts. Sunita William and Butch Wilmore's return has been delayed. They will return in the SpaceX vehicle in February 2025. Joining me on the broadcast right now at this point of time is my colleague Brian Thomas. Brian, now after months of turmoil rather, the Starliners uh, has now landed on the Earth and had departed earlier from the International Space Station without its crew and now it lands in New Mexico. What is the official statement and uh, response of the NASA on this and how are the developments taking place as far as also the return of Sunita William and uh, and others are concerned at this point of time. Brian if you can hear me clearly. Audible. Yes, Brian. Over to you. I'm similar, you're audible. Yeah, similar. Can you can you repeat your question, please? I All right, you. Brian. What we are yeah. also understanding at this point of time, as we are learning that after months of turmoil, after the safety, Boeing's astronaut capsule Starline has landed on the Earth, and now the uh, coming back of the scientist uh, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore has also been delayed. Now it has also landed in New Mexico desert, but what is the NASA responding to these developments and what is coming in the latest? Uh, well, Simran, definitely uh, Boeing Starliner capsule has returned to Earth from the International Space Station uh, and which marked the rather the end of its nearly three month mission in space and the capsule which landed uh, unfortunately without any crew on board left behind two NASA astronauts that is which Bill Moore and Sunny Williams. Now, uh, now they will remain on I ISS for an additional five to six months. Even the Starliner undocked also from the ISS shortly after 6 p.m. Uh, you know, and sp spent about six hours in orbit before beginning its descent. Now, both the Bill Moore and Williams who piloted the Starliner to the ICS in June watched as a spacecraft that was nicknamed as Calypso made its journey back to Earth and Williams also encouraged the mission control team with a heartfelt message also that it is time to bring uh, Calypso home and they have got this and they have their backs and they have uh, and it is time to bring her back. Now as the capsule also approached Earth also around midnight it faced one of the most critical and challenging phases of its mission also which is re-entering into the atmosphere and this case required the Starliner to position itself precisely to endure the intense heat and pressure of uh, re-entry where speeds also ex uh, exceeded around 17,000 miles per hour uh, potentially heating the exterior of the spacecraft to over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the capsule's landing process also involved deploying a series of parachutes which were recently also redesigned by Boeing followed by airbags that cushioned its final descent enabling a safe touchdown at White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. And this marked a very significant milestone also as Starliner became the first US made capsule to land on solid ground rather than splash down in the ocean, which is a feature designed to simplify the uh, uh, spacecraft's recovery and re uh, refurbishment. And despite the successful landing also, it has journey has been very fraught with issues also, including the helium leaks, thruster malfunctions encountered during its outgoing uh, flight in June, and the technical challenges contributed to NASA's decision to return the capsule without crew members as official expect, expressed concerns rather over, uh, you know, the, 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 
safety of the two very uh, uh, important astronauts also who were there and to also Wilmore and Williams are now expected to return to Earth uh, aboard a SpaceX capsule in February 2025. All right, Brian. Simran. Thank you for giving us all these details and latest updates while I also have my guest joining me on the broadcast, Group Captain Veen Jha joins me at this point. I appreciate you joining me on the broadcast, sir. What we are also observing right now, essentially, is the Boeing Starliner's first astronaut mission making uh, the concluding with an empty capsule landing on the Earther. And right now also, there are uh, now concerns mounting on the returning back journey of Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore. Uh, Simran. Uh, yes, compliments to Boeing, Star Boeing uh, for their Starliner to come back to Earth uh, intact. Uh, whether it has landed at the same designated, pre-designated place or not, that has to be uh, ascertained a little later. But you know, there are many questions that the Starliner Boeing will have to have answered. Firstly, there are about 28 odd thrusters, out of which five had failed. Uh, one failed, uh, you know, during the launch itself, and uh, four subsequent had developed. The failure during the uh, docking effort. Uh, in R&D, we believe that if uh, any uh, any any system or subsystem of a particular batch has failed, there are more possibility that the other uh, numbers of the system will also fail. So, if five had failed during the ascent towards the docking, then there was uh, uh, you know fear that more thrusters will fail while coming back for uh, you know uh, uh, to, to the earth after the deorbiting hmm. what exactly happened simran may I, if i may just explain to your viewers look uh, international space station is almost nearly say uh, about 400 uh, uh, 25 to 500 odd kilometers above the earth from there hmm. after the docking star liner is starting deceleration with these thrusters Deceleration starts so that the forward speed, what presently at that time of the orbiting is about uh, 17,000 kilometers per hour. That's a huge uh, velocity, about 22 Mach number that you can call it. So that's a huge velocity that has to be decelerated. And that deceleration also finds a path, the trajectory of re-entry into the atmosphere. If the re-entry is too shallow, if the thrusters have not functioned well, then the re-entry will be very, very shallow. It may not be six hours. It may be 12 hours, 24 hours, maybe a week. You know, that sort of unpredictabilities are there if the thrusters have failed. That was the main uh, suspicion about the Starliner bringing the crew back. Mm. That if the thrusters fail, what will happen if the star, that Starliner remains in the uh, space for, you know, more than a day, two or seven days or a week together, what will happen? They will run out of the essentials and they cannot uh, come back to the Earth. So that was the main thing. Secondly, if the trajectory is uncontrolled, then the star liner may make the re-entry to the atmosphere and land at a place which was not pre-designated. Like in this case, it has landed in Mexico's uh, uh, white sands, uh, as, as your reporters has mentioned. Hmm. But it was designed to be splashing down into the ocean. So all these unpredictabilities were there and with that, the crew couldn't have uh, come back in this particular uh, case. Uh, I also believe that while coming back, uh, velocity had uh, exceeded the de designed uh, re-entry uh, limitations. Uh, but that is not the major truth because the, the surface of the Starliner, whether it is the Starliner or uh, uh, SpaceX uh, Dragon, they are meant mm. to stand uh, withstand about say 3000 uh, to 3500 uh, degrees celsius so that is fine but the problems that would occur if the thrusters fail whether the trajectory is correct or not re-entry point is correct or not so with these unpredictability crew sunita william or book wilmore they could have boarded this starliner for coming back as far as the the crew are concerned they are safe at the international space station i think i believe they have been assigned the task of carrying out some uh, research which is going on there so they are contributing right now and uh, both of them are uh, well versed well experienced in the iss 
people can uh, remain at the international space station for uh, more than a year uh, earlier also people have stayed in the international station uh, space station russian crew has stayed in the mir for over 400 days in the international space station itself uh, during uh, 2001 and 2023 uh, people have stayed for over uh, nearly 400 uh, days uh, or days so there is no problem of living there for you know few months so that's not an issue they will be safe their health will be all right there should be absolutely no problem from that issue mm -hmm. but what is more important is now SpaceX should be able to launch their okay. crew dragon the crew thing because right now even spacex is having a problem mm. there are two uh, last uh, launches of the falcon 9 rocket they have had a problem falcon the the previous two previous had failed at the upper stage uh, motor had failed uh, even the first stage motor was unable to make a landing onto the uh, uh, dragon ship so those problems SpaceX is facing, so they will have to readdress uh, those issues that while carrying the crew from here, in the Crew Dragon, that is the manned space flight, uh, the, func the functions must be absolutely, uh, you know, without any dot, any shade of dot, as Boeing uh, Starliner had had, because Boeing also had suffered these leakage before launching. And in the space launches, we have a saying that if you have a problem in a ship, uh, mm -hmm. spaceship mm -hmm. then you must not launch come what may it be the human launches must not happen it should be aborted first readdress those things it may take uh, a few days few weeks few months makes no difference but it must not be launched and uh, possibly in the uh, in the in the pace of hurry uh, boeing uh, had launched their starliner and they have faced the consequences mm -hmm. now this particular Starliner will be incomplete as far as its human flight is concerned because only one way flight has happened and that too with a problem. Return flight has been without human uh, in the occupation. So it's an incomplete uh, or rather the failed uh, trial that may call it. But then, you know, all these things uh, do happen in R&D. Whenever we are developing a new uh, ship, new aircraft, new uh, anything, there are chances of some system going off and those are the learning pages for us, the designers. So that is a, a lesson given to us that this, this may happen during the flight. So obviously, uh, Boeing will have a lot of lessons uh, learned from this particular flight and they will have to improve in the coming days. I only hope that they have got a certification agency which is neutral, which is not part of the standard or, or, or Boeing team. That should be absolutely independent body to certify the, the next mission that it goes through. Similar. Hmm. Hmm. All right, Mr. Jha. Also, I would like to bring on my another guest, Manish Purohit, who is a former ISRO researcher and senior scientist on the broadcast. I appreciate you speaking to NewsX and giving, giving us your time, sir. What essentially, Mr. what Mr. Jha has said has been a very well detailed analysis in the genesis of the entire uh, landing back of the Starliner. Now, the Starliner mission has captured initially the international attention and technical problems that have forced the NASA to extend the stay of astronauts uh, Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams. Now, uh, you know, what do you think, Mr. Prohit, in your opinion, is next for both of these uh, astronauts? Good afternoon, Simran. So, actually, if we look at the Starliner and the whole episode that has happened and that has unfolded from the June till this date and what is going to happen in the future, so there were a few issues. Uh, first, we have to understand why NASA has to bring Starliner back uncrewed in a hurry and why SpaceX has to carry only two astronauts, not four, so that they can bring back Butch and Sunita Williams back on Earth. So, what happened actually? Uh, when such missions happen, so there are multiple variables and all the variables have to be uh, tested and qualified and verified that everything, every subsystem is working fine. Helium is a problem because helium is kind of a gas which can in any of a system find its way out. So helium leakage is one issue. The other one was the thrusters. So when we talk about a launch, when you talk about a launch with the astronauts on board, Thrusters issue was not able to, you know, the experts were not able to get into the depth of it, why it is happening. Initially, five thrusters were out, out of 28, five were out, now 27 were up, only one was out. 
means there was some issue when out, out of 28, five thrusters, thrusters were not working, but then four came on board. They were working perfectly fine. And we can see like, like this undocking process. This particular Starliner was not meant to get undocked autonomously. It was designed to get undocked with the crew inside. Means when this Starliner was launched, it was designed such a way, the software was designed and developed such a way that Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore should be inside the Starliner when undocking has to be initiated. So that patch, that software patch was uploaded and the system was, you know, tweaked a bit so that we can have autonomous undocking. When we talk about autonomous undocking, then thrusters, we call it reaction control thrusters and normal thrusters, they play a very important role. Why? Because when we are leaving the International Space Station, there is an ellipsoid area, we call it an ellipsoid area, which is around 2 km by 4 km of an area. That is the area where the Starliner or any crew ship and when it is getting undocked from the International Space Station has to be properly taken care of because that is the area once it is cleared then there is no danger of getting back into the International Space Station or ramming into the International Space Station. Now this was uncrewed autonomous undocking so that was one part where NASA was a bit skeptical because they were not able to explain why 5 failed and 4 came up. So when if you, if you look at the official statement that NASA gave they, they were saying that right now the understanding of the physics behind the failing of the thrusters was unexplained and the community the experts that were sitting and they were discussing and they were they were the one who were about to decide whether it is it will come back with the astronauts or it has to come back uncrewed then there the decision was taken that since right now not the whole everyone in the room was not convinced by the capabilities of the thrusters why because something some coating is there in the plumbing lines and some coating is there in the connectors of the, the thruster system which was getting swollen up and then automatically after some time when the heat is uh, spreaded out it was uh, again coming back to the intact position and then this was getting unexplained with the uh, test on the ground, with the hot test, with the uh, fire test they have done on the Starliner prototypes they have on the ground. So NASA decided that fine, we are not going to take any chance. If you look at this process of undocking and touchdown right now that we have witnessed, it was perfectly fine. Starliner was designed to come back on Earth. It was designed to land on the uh, it land on the land surface. As we see Dragon Moon goes to these oceans and the sea, it, it was supposed to come on the land. It has done perfectly everything fine. Parachute was perfectly drawn when the ballistic parachutes come out. Rock parachutes were perfectly done. Main parachutes deployment were perfectly done. Everything was perfect. But still, the question is, the issue was unexplained. Now, in future, what is going to happen? If you talk about the Starliner, Boeing has done everything. They have done everything, all the tests they have done. They have done thousands of tests in, in this duration of time but still unanswerable. Hmm. The observations were not pro properly answered and explained. So the, the main aspect of this crew flight test was certification for the future missions. It's a commercial crew program of NASA. It means if you prove yourself, you will get more contracts and you will get more deals. So that we are going, we, we have to wait for that. But one thing here that our Indian Space Organization, ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization and our Gaganyan program can see and witness is the tests that we are doing, you might have seen, uh, we are doing drop parachute tests, we have, we have done the parachute deployment test, IADN test, all these tests we have done, those are very critical. Why? Because when we are re-entering, then we have, the crew module has to uh, see the heat of around 3000 degrees and that heat, if not properly oriented, the mm. crew module is not properly oriented, that can simply result in devastation. So reaction control thrusters and the we call it attitude control because uh, the, the orientation has to be properly managed. The way it has to enter, it has to enter the same way. It can't have any other deviation. So these are the very peculiar things that have to be taken care of, The how the parachutes have to be deployed. And then during the touchdown, when we are coming down and descending, then it has to be balanced, then it is having a tilt, then that tilt has to be taken care of. One rotating arm has to be deployed so that the tilt all gets right. taken care of. The heat all shield right. has to come out. So all these basic things we have witnessed today were perfectly fine as expected. But whether they get the certification or not for the commercial crew program, that completely in the hands hmm. of NASA now. All right, all right. Thank you, Mr. Manish and um, Mr. Mr. Cha for speaking to us. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.